Bugs Bunny cartoons. Um, they've been around long enough. Uh, most everyone has seen them. And if you remember Bugs Bunny, you probably remember one of the characters who had that line, Shh, be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> who was that? Elmer, Elmer Fudd. Fudd. Yeah. He'd creep along, tiptoeing with his big shotgun through the forest, looking for Bugs Bunny, looking for a rabbit, right? He'd come across a black hole in the ground, and he'd peer down into that dark hole, and then a, a hand from off screen would come and tap him on the backside, right? And ask a question, what's up, Doc? And he would respond typically with some, shh, I'm hunting rabbits, right? <laughs> because although he knew what he was looking for, when it came his way, he didn't recognize it at first. He didn't, he didn't realize what was in front of him all the time. I think as we look ahead to a new year, since you're here tonight, I'm guessing that, that you know what you're looking for, at least in part, in 2020. You're looking, in some way, you're looking for God to be at work. And you're looking for what He's going to do in your life, or in the life of this church, or, or in your family. So, my question to you, as we move into this message, is where are you looking for God to show up in 2020? That. He's got my back. Where are you looking? Elmer Fudd looked through the forest, looked down in that, that rabbit hole. Are you looking for God to, to be at work in a family situation? Some family relationships, maybe? Or, or maybe you're looking for God to be at work in, in some areas related to health. Or maybe finances. Maybe you'd like to see God show up in some, some friendships. Or in some aspect of work. Or, or maybe in a more general sense, just purpose, calling, and, and what, what are you asking me to do, God? So where do you, where do you look for these things? And what if, what if while you're looking and you're, and you're seeking those, those kinds of things out, you get that tap on your backside and that question, what's up, Doc? Will you recognize that God might be working in a way you don't expect? in a place that you're not always focused on. See, I think, I think this is what we do as, as God's people. We, we look for God to be at work. We expect Him to be working. And we've seen that in the past. But sometimes we miss it. Sometimes, sometimes we don't realize what He's doing. And He's tapping us on the backside, kind of like Elmer Fudd peering into that rabbit hole with a rabbit standing behind Him. We're looking in one place because we've seen God at work there before. And we miss what He's doing in another place. Because He's doing something new. And I think, I think we miss it because we, we spend a lot of time looking back. Now, I'm a, maybe not a huge uh, diehard football fan, but I do like to follow the Packers because I grew up in Wisconsin. So that's my team. You may be a Raiders fan or a 49ers fan. That's great. That's your home team. You should go for it. But I'm a Packer fan. I like watching the Packers. I like watching the Packers even more when they win. So watching your team get a victory is always a little more engaging and a little more exciting. I would love to see the Packers win the Super Bowl. Now, one option that I have is I could go and watch recordings of the 1967 Super Bowl one, and I could watch them win the Super Bowl any day of the week. But it's not quite the same. Thing. It's not. It's not the same as, as seeing that new thing happen. And I think I think maybe that's a good way to think about entering a new year and looking for what God is going to do new. We don't just want to remember what he's done in the past. We want to look for what he's going to do in the future. As the people of God, it's good to look back. It's good to look back and remember what God has done. To celebrate, to be encouraged. We can look back and see what God has done at Calvary over the past year. <coughs> some simple things. A new pastor. Uh, we've had some growth in attendance and in giving. We've, we've seen new members come into this place. We've had baptisms. We've had confirmation. We've had VBS and a new start for Sunday school. That wasn't happening a year ago. So we've seen those things in the past year. And it's look good to, to look back on that and to give God thanks for those things. And then it's good to look ahead and expect that our God may do something new. In our meeting today, we see these words 
from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. See, we've seen and received grace in the past, and now our God lays on top of that new graces, new gifts. He, he, he piles them up. He layers them one on top of the, the next. And, and some of what, what John might be pointing to and reminding his readers of is, you know, there was grace evident in Moses as, as a leader of God's people. And then God lays on top of that this grace of Jesus, who's an even better leader. There was grace in the law and the Ten Commandments, God's gift to his people. And yet grace was laid on top of that as Jesus comes and he fulfills the law in our place. There is grace in God's presence with his people, especially in the, in the tabernacle. As, he, as Israel traveled through the desert, God was right there with them. And now, how did today's reading begin? These, these words, the word became flesh, and the word there is tabernacle, dwelt among us. And so there's a new presence of God that we know in Jesus, that he lays on top of this, this former gift, and he lays something else on top of it as Jesus comes. And then, even beyond that, Jesus sends his Holy Spirit, and, and it's another grace laid on top of that still. See, here's, here's the thing. We would be, I think, we would be remiss to build a tabernacle because we wanted to seek out the presence of God. And you know that. We're not trying to recreate the temple of God of the Old Testament era, or the tabernacle as Israel wandered through the, the wilderness, we'd, been, we'd be mistaken to expect that God can only do things one way. And he has to repeat that again for us. I mean, that's even why we can let go of the Bibles that are stacked up in front of us this evening. These, I mean, these books have, have carried the message of God's grace. They've shared that message, and they've, they've spread that message among us, and among people who've gathered here, in homes and in this church. But the books themselves are not really the gift. They're the carriers of the gift. And they are, they are one way that God has given us a gift, and we can expect that God's going to lay another grace on top of this. He's going to continue to share his gifts with us. And this is what we see in Jesus. See, we, we see grace as we look back on his birth, on his life, on his death, and his resurrection. We look back and we see grace in his teaching and his miracles. We see grace in the way that he interacted with others, the way that he lifted them up. We see grace in his appointing apostles to share the message of his life, his death, his resurrection, of all he's done, to share that with us. And today, in the present time, we look around and we see grace in his sending the Holy Spirit to be with us, to dwell among us, to, to work within us. We see grace in the faith that he's given us, the identity that he forms in us in our baptism. We see grace in the forgiveness and the life that he offers in, in his body and blood. He lays that on top of what was there already. And we look ahead. We look to the future and we can expect that there will be new grace laid on top of this in his calling for us in 2020. New grace laid on top of these in the work that he has lined up for us to do. New grace laid on top of these things in the doors that he will open for Calvary. And we can look further ahead and fully expect and anticipate that there is a new grace that will be laid upon, laid on top of these in our resurrection. An even greater grace laid on top of all of this at Jesus coming again to bring us home with him. See, we can count on God's grace to continue. We can count on his gifts to be given again in 2020. We can count on him to lay new graces on top of the old. Jeremiah the prophet wrote, his mercies are new every morning. So we look back at 2019 and we see God's grace. We look ahead to 2020 and we expect a new grace. So don't be surprised if you're looking in one place and God taps you on the backside with that what's up doc kind of expression. And you turn and you find out and a new grace on top of the earth. Amen. Would you please stand for the decommissioning?